Okay, my friends, it's Roger once again. This time we're going to get into the nuclear electron flood core theory. As everyone should know by now, this is pulsed red laser. These little white dots are the ether particles, which are free electrons floating in the air, collects on you as static. This is the accelerated wave here, forced through a venturi, creating extreme chaos and these what they call interference patterns, which are negative repulsion patterns, also creating this extreme reverse electronic repulsion due to the concussion of the particles here. We can see the ether illuminated. This is the Higgs fields that surround the boson particles after it leaves the accelerator here and spins off in a very high speed what they call boson charged particle carrier this is the concussion of a high speed reverse spinner into a Higgs field these which this particle is something that is smaller than light because these particles are light particles that's from light from red laser this particle beam stream which is what I'm you know, confronting uh, Ken Wheeler about, because he says there's no particles, there's no uh, whatever it is. They are particles. This is accelerated light. That's plasma. Those are the particles. This is repulsive magnetic interference. It's not... Be, and it's a single slit, and it's a venturi. Anyway, we're going to go through all this stuff. And this shows the actual particle. There's an upspin and a downspin to dipoles. That is red light. Now, they get bigger and bigger and bigger as you go to green and blue and then your X-rays and gamma rays and all that stuff up until you get nuclear radi radiation, which is big, big chunks that do serious damage. These little ones, we can see them. They don't hurt us because they're too small. The red can't even displace other electrons. The blue displaces other electrons every time. It's just simply a larger particle. Now, I'm going to show you what happens when electrons flood the core. And I can show you in exquisite detail with magnets, because it is nothing more than magnetism. All interactions of light and electricity and lightning and every single thing there is that involves energy is strictly due to electrons and magnetism. So what are we looking at here? This is this kind of magnetic paper. Watch. See what happens when you put a... Hold on a second. Hello my friends. Today we're going to go over light one more time and magnetism. Now I get a lot of people telling me to look at Ken Wheeler's work and it's good. I, I've looked at it. I have no real um, argument with some of the things he says, but um, I do have an argument where he cut, says that there is no such thing as a particle and it's never been seen. And you know, this goes back a couple of years, so maybe he's changed his ways, but um, uh, not that I know of. And so, you know, I, I, I do look at his work, so but don't tell me that I have to change my way of thinking because I, I have already seen the particles. But this is what I take away from his thinking. Maybe I'm wrong. But here's what he has to say back then, and I think he's still thinking the same thing. The light is not a wave, because a wave is not something. A wave is what something does. Wave! This is a wave. No, it's your hand flapping. No, well, it's a photon. The construct, and it's only that, a construct, it's a concept invented by humanity to try to understand light. The notion of a photon particle is absolutely 100% arbitrary and has no basis in reality, has no basis in nature, and it has no empirical evidence whatsoever. There has never been any such thing as a photon particle ever observed, ever. It's absolute nonsense. It's bullshit. If, that, if you believe that, then after the end of day of shooting with your camera, you should take the lens off and dump out all those photon particles. Because your camera must be full of those goddamn photon particles, right? Humanity is not as smart as it thinks it is. All right, well, he's not as smart as he thinks he is, but I have the evidence. Now, the particles as he's t that he is talking about turn into light and heat. They don't turn into 
bits and pieces of dust. Now, I do have the evidence to support what I'm saying. Okay, this is a pulsed red laser. You see, it's coming through the air. There's no reverse waves. There's nothing. There's a little bit of glow in here. And it's just a, a wave coming through the air. It looks like just a big ball. Now, literally, though, the only thing that is here, there's a dot right there that is the particle coming through the air, and it owns an enormous region. Now, Ken Wheeler did mention he had a magnet that he could twist, and it would spin, uh, it would deflect the cathode ray tube, which is a negative beam of particles. He could deflect that at 23 feet away, which is absolutely fantastic. I understand why, because he, it is polarizing the actual particles that are in the air which are these particles when he twists it they're all aligning plus minus plus minus plus minus plus, and it going all the way around 23 feet and coming back from the north to the south pole that's what he's doing and that's why it affects the the cathode ray tube way out here now so that's just one story about one of the things he spoke of now and again I'm not trying to hurt anybody or say anything against anybody he's got his own way of thinking that's okay but I'm showing you the evidence that that, that makes it not correct <laughs> that's all I can say now there's the beam coming through the air and I say this is nothing more than a shock wave and I'll say, show you why I can say that with certainty all right, this is a venturi, which is nothing more than a restriction that forces particles. Anything here to restrict itself comes through here. They use it in gasoline carbureted engines to force the gasoline, which is droplets, to vaporize into atomization. It literally turns them into atoms. It's, it's a venturi. It crushes the particles together forces them to accelerate there is no option whatsoever and that is accelerating and you can see it's already started the acceleration way back here and you can see it is a particle that is the wave the wave is created because the particle is owns a region every one of those little dots owns a big region just like that just like that and as it forces its way through the air, everybody gets out of the way normally until it backs up on itself in this venture. Then it says, I've got to get out of here at a bazillion miles an hour and I'm going to suck everybody with me. It comes through as they pile up against each other. Chaos. Plasma. Excitation. Then we have these which they call interference patterns they're not interference patterns they're repulsion patterns of negative particles whoops couldn't see that Let me back out here whoops i gotta back up this way now these are what they call interference patterns you see these stripes they say it's because of flappy wave and one goes this well this is only single slip first of all it's a highly accelerated particles coming through here crushed together so what does that mean that means I'm a negative particle you're a negative particle. get the hell away from me is what it means so when you come out of here until here they cannot escape each other they are just in terrible terrible it's spinning this way see it's spinning like coming this way spinning this way you see this so when you look at it, you see a wave up, we see a wave down, up and down, up, but it's a spin this way, spinning, spinning. And some go this way, and some come over the top and come out this way through the venturi. So you already have some going this way, some going this way. The bulk will go right straight through the center. They will set up a negative interference pattern, if you want to call it that. I call it a repulsion pattern. So it's a negative repulsion. So we're taking a bar magnet of negativeness and saying, what am I going to do? I'm going to push away. It's going to have positiveness here. And then it's going to have another negativeness and then a positive, negative, positive. Then at the end, there's nobody to corral it in. There's no more negative pushing this way. So they go flying out that way. That's what causes these interference patterns. Now, what else do you see here? 
We see the particles. That's the particles. There's no question those are particles. So, again, there is empirical evidence to support the things I am saying, that light can be accelerated, light is a particle, light owns a very large region surrounding an unseen particle, light creates plasma, light creates repulsion interference patterns, and additionally, light concusses reverse, creating a reverse electromagnetic field. It's a, our, EMF is electromagnetic field, electromagnetic force, however you want to call it. It is electromagnetic pushback from the exploding particles that are crashing into each other, and you can see them in absolute unbelievable detail. You see how many particles? I hope you can see that. Sometimes this thing gets blurred out. But these particle lines, every one of those is a concussion of a particle at the venture, creating such a reverse magnetic field. Think of the size of this field. Ken Wheeler said he has a magnet that will affect 23 feet swish and swish. Well, all I'm doing is shooting light from a red laser, this uh, bit around here somewhere. Right here. So this little laser right here, it's a pulse red laser. It pulses because it's got to get a return. You know, you got these other kind. Uh, I believe they're continuous waves, and this one is a pulse. So what am I getting? I'm getting pulses. Boop, 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 boop. Originally we saw, and we are getting enormous concussive reverse wave, absolutely enormous. Look at the size of the circle that that would make compared to the size of the circle that was coming in. Now, I understand this because a venturi creates a choke, and a choke creates a reverse electromagnetic field. Depending upon the clamping characteristic of the choke, which would be affected by the distance and the curve. This is a tunable choke. We could change this reverse pattern. This is right now choking in, I mean, yikes. Unbelievable. Now, what else do we see here? So now we've got a choke. We know we have a choke. And a choke creates reverse EMF. Fully understood. You talk to any electrical engineer, they'll say, yeah, you're right, no question whatsoever, true. Now, what do we see here? You see these little tiny particles that are kind of glowy looking? Just hanging around here, just laying around. What is that all about? Those particles are concussed. Free electrons in the air. And yes, they're free. They float around all by themselves looking for a place to attach to like static electricity does to a person that has more water content, because water is a polar molecule, and the air is completely saturated, not only completely saturated, but it's, it's got air, water in it, let's put it that way, it's hydrated, there's always water in the air. Now, how much is it? It's not zero percent, there's going to be some water molecules in the air, and they are the things that attract the static electricity, highly polar. That's what you're seeing here. And what are they doing? They are being concussed the same way these are being concussed, only by a wave that is reduced in power. I mean, it's reduced in, in, in um, amperage, in, ampli in, in, in the amount of intensity. See how these real brilliant men, they glow, bang, 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 bang. Well, when you're pushing back, you're pushing back like hell, like crazy. However, it's not glowing to the white intensity that it does when the original disc comes through. Because the original disc has a little more force to it as it enters the air in front of it, you see? And they all glow up pretty pretty strongly because this thing's coming through. And all these guys are just laying around and saying, oh, it's nice today, yeah, yeah, having a good time. Get out of the way. And they get out of the way. And they start glowing like crazy to try to get out of the way. So. We can see the difference in the intensity of the glow of the concussed 
particles. It's not a little less, less intensity of the concussion. Now, what else is going on? This is light right at the chaos of the slit, right above. It's, it starts to turn back into its normal configuration of red particles. Now, this is what happens as it hits the air. That's the white, you know, I call it repulsive interference coming out of there. It's, it's it, it highly accelerated. That's Cheryankov radiation. These little tiny white filaments, you can't really see them well here. I have other shots where you can see them. Those are what they call the bosons, and that is a charged particle. Zzzz, and as it, this spinning little bugger hits the air, which is not moving, just like the other ether air was not moving, just sitting there. Well, this time it's hitting it so hard that they all polarize around that particle, which is the charged carrier charged particle carrier carries the field with it. These are all being concussed, these fields, every one of them. So every one of those is, a, is, is an electron particle, photon particle, whatever you want to call it. And now we're going to look at what they turn into. And then we're going to see what that turns into. Because that right there, my friend, is not what it should be. That, I believe, is a reverse spinning particle which means that instead of spinning and throwing the particles out around it, it's coming into itself and clustering them into its own self. That's the way I see that. Could be wrong. But we've got Cheryankov. We've got high-speed charged boson particles, charged, spinning, slamming into the polarized ether, which is nothing more than electrons just laying around in the air, they zip, spin up and start spinning around that polarized particle as it slams through the air. Same thing the Higgs bosons that CERN works with, only they, ours are, um, you know, 8,000 times less heavy, They're, but same particles, identical same particles. But the, they're using only the big ones. They're using protons, we're using light, which is electrons and, and photons. And positrons. They say they can't see them. Here they are. All right, now this is right after the Venturi. Right there is where the Venturi, the particles are slamming into the air and they're finishing up and turning into these Higgs and then they they create these particles. Now, I say that's a photon. So another, we have another empirical evidence of the particle. Now, I'm seeing dark and I'm seeing light and I'm seeing dark and light and so forth wrapped around and I'm seeing spikes shooting up, spikes shooting down. I would, to me, that's a particle. Now, it might not, it might just be energy. I don't know, but I see what I would call a particle. And I say that particle owns that enormous region around itself. And it is stepping down and then it will become this over here which is, I don't know what it is, <laughs> it's just that it changes and gives us two little particle blips. And then it steps down back into its standard spinning red little particle. Now, what is that? I don't know. I'm looking at that as capacitive and inductive reactors. Hold on. I don't know if has, this is even close, but I'm, I was, I'm trying to think, how would this thing react? There's the right-hand rule, and you know, it's, that's based on the direction it's going. So if this, let's say this particle came out of the, these are both Venturi's. As this thing spins into the throat, let's say it was right-hand rule, so it's spinning, right-hand rule. Well, it's been a right-hand rule. Well, that's backwards because it's going in the wrong direction. Now it comes to the right-hand rule here, which is the correct direction. It speeds up and you get it turning bright, speeding up, speeding up into the Venturi. And it's still turning to the right. Now it's got to back out of there. That's when it turns dark, 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 dark. Still turning to the right. Comes up here, turning to the right. Speed up, speed up, light, 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 light. Speed to the bottom. Still turning to the right. Has to back out. Dark, 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 dark. Because it's the right-hand rule says you have to be going this direction and it spins this way. If it's spinning this direction and going the back direction, it's backwards. And I'm going to show you what I, we saw coming backwards. 
Okay, I just want to make sure you understand. I'm not going against Ken Wheeler, but I do have evidence to support what I'm saying. It is a particle, and it can be accelerated. Light is all these things. Now, that is the nuclear core of a hydrogen atom. The center is positive with an electron floating around it. Well, I say that center is not just a single particle. It is one of these, which is 1837 particles. You see, why 80, instead of 1836? Well, there's 918 of positive and 918 of negative plus one additional negative. So when they combine together, they go and all the negatives combine around the positive core. That's called electron flooding. When they do that, they create a negative zone around the positive core and that keeps an additional electron at a single orbit and I will show you that now in, in um, tractor beam magnets. Alright, there's the positive center, there's the negative surrounding flooded electrons, then electrons will collect in their orbitals surrounding this depending upon how many particles here it will depend on how many electrons here he's only going to add one with an additional magnet which will come up here and won't be able to touch remember this is the f the core which is positive then it has surrounding negativeness which will keep any negativeness additional at bay because it's already got a sufficient number but it still has an attractive core here goes and watch this that's an electron it's at a quantum distance it will stay there as this molecule does its daily things bouncing around getting warm and cooling down and heating back up but if it becomes so excited See, now it's getting heat and it's getting warm, it's during the daylight, yeah, jiggling around, well, it'll cool off later. However, if you turn, it got so hot, or it got so infiltrated with radiation, it drove that electron away, that's light. All right, so, I've just demonstrated one of the principles we're talking about. Now, here's another single shot, a uh, single slit. A laser shot that shows you that the light is a spinning particle. That's it's a spinning particle, and as this is the back wall, and the, the the slit is up here. As it comes through, it spins through the slit. Some goes that way, some comes through this way. That's why you see these exact. You see even the dark spot and the dark spot here. That's because it dives under here, and then it slams into it here behind, and then here it comes under and behind and then they go here and here and here some hit way over here some hit way over here some hit right in the middle and that's why you get this pattern and it's a spinning particle you can see that so anybody can see it spinning 